A reading from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41, which can be found on page 1022 of your Pew Bible if you'd like to follow along. Jesus calms the storm. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It's interesting how living in different parts of the country, you get, well, acclimated to uh, the climate and the storms and the risks that go with it. I grew up in the Midwest, and it's not unusual uh, to have a very powerful thunderstorm roll through uh, this time of year. In fact, I remember as, as a kid, um, I grew up in a manse, much like this one actually, 100-year-old house and two-story, and it was uh, downtown, and all the houses kind of looked the same, and uh, I remember laying in bed at night and watching the lightning just flash and it would make all the houses down the road light up and actually in a way it was oddly peaceful believe it or not you might think I'm crazy that I could actually enjoy and sleep through a thunderstorm but then I found myself living here in uh, this side of the country, and I remember our very first trip uh, driving from Florence uh, up to Yahat. Uh, it took me a while to learn how to pronounce that. It is not actually yak hats, which is what it looks like. <laughs> That's what it looks like. And we're driving along, and for the first time in my life, I see a sign telling me that we are entering a tsunami zone. My anxiety immediately <laughs> went up. And I'm watching for the nearest exit, the way to turn right, because I know that's, I want to head east if anything happens. In fact, there's a joke about true Midwesterners. The joke is that uh, when the storms get really bad in the Midwest, you can tell who's lived there their whole lives because the tornado, tornado sirens are going off and everybody's headed for their basements because all houses have basements in the Midwest. 
And the true Midwesterners are the ones standing on their front porch with their cell phones <laughs> recording the storm as it's coming in. I remember one particular storm that got my attention and even those Midwesterners who are used to uh, severe thunderstorms and the occasional tornado that goes with it, even they will go running when the sky turns green. When the sky turns green, it's time to head inside. And I remember one particular afternoon when a storm seemed to come out of nowhere and the lightning flashed and cracked and it was not some rumble off in the distance, it was the kind that shook the house. And the power immediately went off and the wind started blowing and glass started breaking. And my dad was ushering all of us downstairs into the basement. And we rode that storm out with minor damage. But I remember the fear in that storm. What if it hits our house? That's the perilous thing about tornadoes in the Midwest is you know, on the coast, when you have a, a hurricane, it seems to just get everybody. But tornadoes have a way of picking and choosing. In fact, while I was serving in my first church in Arkansas, we had a tornado go through south of town. And two of my parishioners found themselves in their carport, which is an open garage hanging on to the outside of their car as their house was literally swept away. <clears throat> Listening to them recount their story made my little story about broken glass seem like nothing. I cannot imagine. Their house was destroyed. They had farm equipment across the street Tractors that, was, tractors that were moved five miles down the road. They got a call a few weeks later from someone in Tennessee that said, I have your canceled checks in my front yard 75 miles away. And those are the storms that you can see and the storms that you can hear. But they're not the only ones, are they? We experience storms in our own lives, health-related, deaths, illness, changes in our lives that are not welcomed or expected. You might think that Seth was choosing this text out of the stuff going on in his own storm, I mean life. But actually this was the lectionary text for this morning, which in many ways was encouraging to me because you know, everybody has those storms. That is one thing I've learned about life is it doesn't matter how much money you have or how much money you don't have. It doesn't matter how healthy you are or how poor your health is. It doesn't matter how good you are or how downright nasty and mean you are. And I'm not talking about anybody in here. <laughs> but the storms come. The waves crash. The winds blow. They rock our boat and rock our world. And you know what I'm talking about. And yet Jesus is sleeping in the boat. I have to admit, 
If I was like the, if I was there in the boat, I would have been screaming too. Come on, Jesus, what is wrong with you? Aren't you worried about the fact that we're all about to drown? Because I have to admit, like the disciples, I struggle with trusting God so much that I can sleep. Think about that for a minute. What is sleep? Sleep is the ultimate release of control. It actually is an amazing thing that we do. We give up consciousness. If you're like me, I could have a freight train go through my room and it wouldn't wake me up. Although I have learned that a wet nose and a lick does. <laughs> Oh, to trust God that much. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great when the storm is blowing in our lives, whatever it is, to say, I know you've got this, God. I know that you can take care of me to such an extent that I don't have to worry. In fact, I can release control to you, the one who commands the waves and the wind. Anybody know how to do that? <laughs> that the best we have, the best advice I can give is to live like Jesus and to do what he does. And what does he do? He's constantly in communion with God. He's constantly talking to God. He's constantly thinking about God. He's constantly running off and getting lost. Well, not lost himself, but everybody else thinks he's lost. They can't find him because he's off in prayer, talking to his father. You see, a life that is soaked in relationship with God is one that's not going to get overwhelmed by the waves of the storm. Trust is one of those things that is not easily given. Trust is a relationship that's built up over a long period of time. And so, if you're like me, from, peer, from time to time, finding yourself struggling to release control and to accept the storm around you and to trust that God is going to keep you safe in the midst of the storm, that's the time to pray. That's the time to call out to God. And you know, I think it's also appropriate that even from time to time we do exactly what the disciples did. We call out to God, don't you even care that I'm drowning here? God can take it. God knows our circumstances. And we know the answer to that question, don't we? Of course. God cares. God cares infinitely for each one of us in the midst of our storms. And he knows that this storm is not going to be the one to overwhelm us. He knows that through this storm, he will bring peace. That's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. And I'm going to trust in him all along the way. Amen? Amen. Please 
Stand as you are able and join me in our affirmation of faith, which comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, as printed in our bulletin. We believe there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose. We are convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. May God speak peace and calm into the midst of our storms. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of God's Holy Spirit abide with all of us today, tomorrow, and forevermore. And all God's people said,